this is Dr. Ron Valdeseri reporting from the International AIDS Meeting here in Washington, D.C. And it's my pleasure to be joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Kevin Fenton, who is the director of the National Center for HIV, Viral Hepatitis, STD, and TB Prevention at CDC. And that's quite a title, and quite it's, a I know it's quite a center. So thank you so much, Kevin, Absolutely. for being here. We wanted to have you share with our viewers uh, some of the important developments around the so-called treatment cascade. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could begin by reminding our viewers, what, what do you mean, uh, what is meant by the treatment cascade? So, Ron, great to be here. So as you are aware, there are more than 1.1 million Americans who are currently living with HIV. And the treatment cascade really describes the journey that those HIV positive persons take as they navigate the healthcare system. In other words, as they become diagnosed with HIV, as they become linked to effective care, whether or not they are retained in care, for those who are in care, whether or not they're offered antiretroviral treatment, and then finally, the proportion of those who are in care and on treatment and who are virally suppressed. So it really is a journey as that patient goes through the healthcare system to be maximally benefiting from effective treatment. And so to state the obvious, certainly obvious to you, uh, we would like to see each of those steps being very high, but in reality that's not the case, is it? That's right. You know, in an ideal world, everybody who is diagnosed would be linked to care, maximally suppressed, and maximally benefiting from antiretroviral treatments. Mm -hmm. But CDC and other researchers have shown that there is a tremendous fall-off in the cascade. And in fact, the most recent data from the CDC suggests that only one in four of all HIV-positive patients are actually get virally suppressed. In other words, maximally benefiting from these effective antiretroviral treatments. So this is a real concern for us as we're thinking about HIV. And CDC has done uh, a current analysis looking at the cascade um, from several different angles including age and race and gender. Mm -hmm. Can you share with our viewers what what you found when you did that analysis. Absolutely. So we had previously released data in World AIDS Day for 2011 suggesting that about 28% of persons were virally suppressed. In the most recent analyses, we've updated those estimates to about 25% or one in four HIV infected persons being maximally suppressed. In addition, we've now provided data on that cascade by age group differences, by gender differences, by the transmission categories, as well as by race and ethnicity. And there are some very interesting findings. Younger people, those aged, for example, under 29 or 30 years of age, are far less likely to be virally suppressed than older adults in the United States. We also see very significant differences across the racial and ethnic groups in the U.S. with, unfortunately, African Americans who are hard hit by this epidemic faring the worst with the treatment cascade. Fewer African Americans are virally suppressed compared to Hispanic and Latinos and whites. Encouragingly, we did not see any differences, significant differences, across gender. So men and women were equally likely to be suppressed and very few differences across the transmission categories. So whether you're gay, whether you're heterosexual or injecting drug user, most of those groups were equally suppressed. So interesting differences and areas for us to focus our efforts. And I think just to, uh, just to make clear for our audience, the reason this information is so important is that it helps prevention experts like Dr. Fenton and his colleagues and treatment experts better understand where to intervene because what's happening at each step is that we're losing people essentially. That, that is correct. So maybe someone gets diagnosed but as you said they don't get referred to care or maybe they get to referred to care but have fallen out of care for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're homeless, maybe they have an ongoing substance abuse issue. So this, this information really is extremely important from a practical level. Absolutely. I think we want to emphasize that. It is absolutely important. And one of the things that we've certainly heard at the recently completed International AIDS Conference is this concept of moving towards an AIDS-free 
generation. And a key strategy for getting there is ensuring that those who are HIV positive are diagnosed and maximally benefiting from the effective treatments which are now available. And so if we know that young people, if we know that certain minority groups or ethnic groups in the U.S. are faring less well in the system, that helps us to target and that helps us to do a much better job. We clearly are talking about the medical benefits of treatment and keeping the viral load suppressed is good for a person living with HIV. Uh, but uh, Kevin, why don't you uh, reinforce the prevention benefit of that as well? I mean, we want to we want to make sure folks understand that. Thank you, and and that you're so right. The good thing is, treatment is treatment. So everybody can benefit as an individual by taking those drugs. But what we also know is that treatment also has this amazing prevention benefits because it reduces the risk of onward transmission of virus of the virus to uninfected partners by approximately 96 percent. So that's a very powerful tool that we now have in our armamentarium, in our toolkit, to help stop the spread of HIV. And that's why all of us should have a vested interest in knowing our status, if we're HIV positive, getting into care and getting treatment as quickly as possible for our own benefits and for the health and well-being of our partners. Great answer, and that's of course why we're hearing more about treatment as prevention. That's correct. So that's that's really, correct. really, really important. So, um, uh, uh, we do clearly have a ways to go if, if less than uh, one in four uh, individuals who are infected with HIV are really receiving optimal care. Um, but I want to give you an opportunity to maybe highlight uh, some of the one or two examples of the many very positive examples of work CDC has done to try to intervene on that cascade? Well, you know, CDC views the cascade and improving on the cascade as a key prevention priority. We have a vested interest in ensuring that all Americans are aware of their HIV status. And over the past five to seven years, we have really been investing new resources to support states and local health departments and community-based organizations across the country to scale up HIV testing. And the good news, Ron, is that we're seeing year-on-year -year increases in the proportion of Americans who report ever having an HIV test. But we need to do more. In addition, CDC has been partnering with our state partners and with CBOs to look at ways in which we can best link people to care and support those persons who are HIV positive to remain in care. And we do this in our partnership with, with other agencies such as HRSA, as well as CBOs across the country. So CDC's role is really around encouraging HIV testing, raising awareness, getting people into care right. and keeping them in right. care. And let's just close with one last question. I want to give you an opportunity to talk about CDC's great new media campaign that is trying to address the stigma, which unfortunately still exists in, in this nation. Uh, fear and stigma about learning about an HIV diagnosis. And, mm -hmm. But you folks have a really great example of, of how to impact that. Can you share that with the audience? Absolutely, and thank you for the opportunity. You know, more than 30 years into this epidemic, the sad reality is that we're still dealing with stigma in the United States. And stigma has a pervasive impact on the ways in which people access treatment and care, the way they get the support that they need from family and friends to deal with this disease, and of course the way people access HIV testing. So in our new campaign, which is called Let's Stop HIV Together, we have brought together people who are infected and uninfected to talk about their experiences, about getting diagnosed. And these are real people, not real actors. People, absolutely not actors. To talk about their experiences of getting HIV tested and having the loving support of those around them to combat this disease. It's an empowering campaign, beautiful images, strong messages, and really drives home the point that if we are going to end this epidemic, it will take all of us, HIV negative and HIV positive, to end this together. Well, thank you so much for sharing those outstanding examples of what CDC is doing to achieve the goals and vision of the National HIV AIDS Strategy. Uh, this is Dr. Ron Valdeseri reporting from the 19th International AIDS Meeting. It's been our pleasure to talk with my friend and colleague, Dr. Kevin Fenton from the CDC. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you.